So which is better, Adobe Commerce B2B or Big Commerce B2B edition? Well, unfortunately, the answer is it depends. I recorded a video that was 20 minutes long the other day, basically a tutorial describing the differences of these two editions. This video, though, is going to be more executive summary style. So again, the question is, which is better? As both a expert Adobe Commerce partner and a big commerce partner, we know both platforms, you might say like the, the back of our hand. And in reality, the answer is still, it depends. I'm not gonna say one or the other is perfect or suitable for everybody because that's not the case. In reality, there are some important differences and the way we approach solving this is through a discovery. Discovery is where we sit down with your team and we learn the ins and outs of your business, the application, your needs, and we help you arrive at the solution that is best for you. What we do, do it all day, every day. We're pretty experienced at it. And I think you will, you will find as much enjoyment as there possibly can be in this process of determining which platform is best for you. But in the meantime, to help kind of get that conversation started, this video describes the pros and cons of both the big commerce as well as the Adobe commerce side. Take a look at this here. The pros uh, on the big commerce side is this centralized dashboard. Check this out. Uh, this dashboard basically has almost everything you need to know about a company right here in this level. I'll be honest, I wish there was also a way to easily from this page view the quotes, orders, and invoices. Um, but honestly, those are pretty easy to get to. So that's not a huge de um, deal. On the other hand, on the Adobe Commerce side, it's kind of like a configuration for a company. There's not really other insights as far as company activity, company users, etc. So again, this is a huge pro on the big commerce side as well. Uh, big commerce allows you to assign salespeople to companies. So you can have a salesperson that only sees these specific companies that they are nurturing and working with. That's a huge win as well. Uh, invoice payments. Uh, you can, big commerce has a really good idea as far as how invoicing works to the extent that customers can then actually pay their invoice through the big commerce front end. That is a huge win right there. Uh, another thing, and this is kind of small, but automatic company approval, Adobe just doesn't have that. Uh, it's pretty easy for a developer to add that in. We've add that, added that in ourselves, but uh, yeah, that's, that, that's a little feature that can go a long way. Same with shared company addresses. Uh, most companies are going to have a set number of locations. It's not many are going to be just all over the country to any destination desired. So there's going to be shared company addresses. And in this scenario, big commerce wins out because you can share these addresses among all users of a company. That's pretty nice. Shared or custom checkout and count fields. You can add whatever field you want into the checkout and the account page. I would say the only downside with this is they are stacked up inside of the comments box as in as text form, but that's still parsable. It's still readable and it gets the job done. So it's, it's perfect there. Um, it's just not like in separate forms. I'm a developer. I come from a developer background. I think along those lines, but for a business user, it gets the job done and it fits the bill perfectly. Now, as far as the cons go on the big commerce side, we have what I would consider a fairly basic order approval system. Uh, there's really no control over what orders are do require approval from senior uh, management, et cetera. So we're going to talk about that more on the Adobe Commerce side as far as a big pro that it has. Uh, and, and here's the other thing. Uh, there are less options for admin customization. That's just... That's just the nature of this type of a system. Now, I've recorded a video, and I'm going to put a link up here as well, about the differences, the fundamental differences between these platforms. And in reality, this is a trade-off, but I consider it a well-worth-it trade-off in almost every case. There probably is a few that this is, is this actually is a real con for, but it's going to be very few. Again, watch the video up here uh, to get learn a little bit more about how that works. Now, on the Adobe side, uh, the pro is, the first pro is that it's completely customizable. Yes, indeed, it is completely customizable. You can change anything anywhere you absolutely want to on the B2B edition thus far. I will say that also is the Achilles heel. These customizations tend to break over time. They tend to atrophy, upgrades, et cetera. Adobe's done a lot of hard work to prevent that, these problems, but 
just not aware of a way to get around this. Another one is powerful order approval rules. I told you I was going to talk about this. Here we go. So on the Adobe side, um, there is a way to create a custom a company tree. Basically, all the users of a company that need to get into this uh, admin area, admin area, uh, get get accounts, and then they can be assigned into a tree format. Different permissions, very granular permissions, way more granular than on the big commerce side. Uh, as such, then you can also create order approval rules. So basically, if an order is over fifty dollars, or if it has four over four hundred dollars of shipping, or pretty much any combination you want, you can then assign it to be uh, approved by certain groups, whether it's whether it's the company administrator, uh, senior management of one sort or another. This is powerful, and this really does. Uh, cater towards more of the enterprise crowd as a result of the really extensive capabilities here in this department. Continuing on, uh, per company shipping method approved control. I, I just don't see this as being that helpful, but maybe there are some companies in which would benefit from this. Um, better category permissions. It's a little bit easier on the uh, Adobe side to control which categories are seen and which ones are not. The cons. Often slow performance. Unfortunately, just by installing the B2B edition or enabling it on the Adobe side, it slows your website down. It, it's just going to do that. There's more lookups. There's more CPU power that's necessary in order to run it. It's just what it takes. Um, also, this idea around whole company visibility. As I showed you the screenshot earlier about this centralized dashboard uh, on the big commerce side, it's, it's easier to find information about companies and it's much harder on the Adobe side. In fact, there is literally no way out of the box to see all orders or all quotes for a given company. It's just not there. It can be added, but it's just not there. And the other thing I would say is the uh, net terms are what I would consider to be halfway implemented. They're there, but it's not really even to the extent on the big commerce side where you can go actually, where you can actually pay your invoice on the website itself. That's a nice feature, but it's just not there on the Adobe side. So this is your list of pros and cons. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at Swift Otter. Uh, we've done a lot of these comparisons. We know, again, we know this like the back of our hand, and we'd be happy to talk this all through with you to help you make the very best decision for your company's future.